So yeah. So I will say like, how can we use Redis as a distributed queue? May I like, what I mean distributed queue, what there could be multiple consumers. It's like a centralized queue in sort, or you can, if uh, if you're using the Redis in the cluster mode, then it's all distributed since you can, but uh, you can have different comp different queues on different systems on the cluster as well. Of course, there could be multiple producers and consumer as well, since queue is mostly if you'd be using in the in the consumer and producer producer mode in the systems. So, like I will see, like I will talk on like what are the queues, queue use cases, how to build the queue using Redis, and then what are like fault tolerant, message library, and message visibility. Then at the last why Kafka versus Redis. Then I will see in that as well. So KQ is nothing but like if I go to any like ticket counter, say any, it's just uh, from Wikipedia. So for example, if I say in like lemon term, then it's like if I go to any like capital, I mean any counters, vending bank or it's vending machine or it's like a ticket counters, then everyone just line up there. Then after that, everyone gets the uh, it's like a first in first out. Whoever's in the front of the counter gets the first ticket, then the next one, and whoever comes in the line, he just get like he just added at the end of the line. So in the same manner, what happens in queue? If we use simply uh, in our systems, then you have messages. You just keep appending at the end and then you start consuming from the front of the queue. So you have a kind of the front and back. So queue generally supports like two operations. It's in queue and DQ. In queue is like, uh, like you just add new element in the queue. DQ is just removing the one element from the queue. So you have back, you just keep adding at the back and like from DQ, you just remove from the front, you keep moving. So like in this case, I have uh, message zero, one, two, two, three, four, five, and so on. So if I'm doing queue, then I just keep abandoning at the back. Then next message will be like eight. It's like a first in first out, zero was like in, was entered first. Then, so that's why it has been removed first. It's like basic principle of the queue. And uh, if we implement this in like uh, simply any languages, then we just use implement this using the circular linked list or circular array, where you have fixed number of elements and we have again front and back. You will start from the zero, one, two, again, like I'm using three only. So in that case, you have zero, one, two, three, and four, and so on elements. If you implement using the ring, and then if you, you can implement the same using the, if you, you can assume it's an infinite buffer, then you just keep appending. It's like a single link list or double link list where you just keep appending at the end. And like from one end, you just keep, keep removing the elements from the one end from the front. So that way you always have the elements in the queue as well, queue. And if we, have the if you would like to have the similar features in Redis, then Redis also has something called a list, which make, which that can be used as a queue as, queue as it is without doing any much operation. So we can use Redis list to implement any sort any sort of queue. It could be a double ended queue as well, where you can in queue from both the ends and DQ from both the end as well. And the different uses of the queue as well. For example. Uh, we have like job schedulings. If you want to schedule some job, for example, run the, the, the dependency as well. For example, like DAG. In DAG, what happened is DAG is directed exactly, exactly graph. You have dependency among different jobs. So this job must be done before the another job. So you have all dependencies. So what do you do? You execute the first job, then put all those in orders and you execute one after another each of them. We use like in caching system, like. LRUs, network packets, when the packets comes on the ethernet, they're also be using the queuing to like merge different packets and like consume packet and like handle those packets in the different formats so that it can be handled to the different uh, application application layer protocols based on that. Like IO requests, if you have a lot of requests, then what do you do? You just enqueue the request from one side and like DQ on another side. And based on that, you just keep the you just make the API request or it could be database request. You can make the request, uh, request in parallel as well, or it can, or it can make parallel request based on the uh, demand as well. It's not demand. 
resource allocation like for example in the in the kernel what happens if you if you want to acquire if you want to read some file or if you want to open some file descriptor then what happens scheduler will put your 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 request in the queue once ever uh, unless of course there are some priority mechanism as well in the queuing so based on the that once it gives the chance then again it, your chance will come next since all over the all pending task will be evaluated first then your task will get the chance to evaluate and similarly like you have producer consumer problems like there are there could be one or more producer there could be more, one or more consumers as well producer is like he will just produce some task it could be anything like doing some database transactions it could be doing it could be calling some apis sending some callbacks or any other task it could be for information or it could be like protocol there like a uh, sending the information to the other servers for any information that you want to exchange that you can do as well on the consumer side like once you receive the message you do some action based on that that can be used with the, with the, that can be solved using the queue as well so like if i talk about the redis then redis is like you know sql key value store and the query is like is performing like in some milliseconds sometimes 5 5 milliseconds even below, even less than that it's a in memory data structures in memory store kv store and it can be set up to use you no know, uh, as a disk persistent as well you can enable the so always you have data even though the disk crash or something happen to your server always you have you will have some data on the node as well currently there are 8.5% users in the productions that the i is just the using the redis in, in their production systems and suppose many of the data structure that you can think of like list g sheet sheet has a stream and map and others as well it's a like a centralized system and of course you can deploy this in the cluster and extend elon mode deployment as well there are sentinel sentinel deployment as well you can opt either of those in if you want to deploy in the cluster mode so redis has like list that can, as like as i said in the probably like we can use the redis list to implement the simple queue operation so nothing to be so everyone can like just append to the list and that they can just pop from the list so that always have the it's all they will get the fairly easy they can implement the queue using the redis but things get very complicated uh, as you see like you need different feature consistency and like durability their things get complicated how do we implement the like consistency among different workers and the like durability and whatever if something is crashing fault tolerance then there you, you cannot directly deal with this all using a single list operation single list data structures so for example in list we can you can just use no r push which r push is doing like pushing at the right of the list and l pop or bl pop l pop will just pop element from the left of the list and bl pop is like blocking pop means what happens even though sometimes elements are not there in the queue in the list or you just wait for some time maybe 500 milliseconds or some seconds or 200 milliseconds or 10 milliseconds based on the use case then suppose that you will get the item from the list using the bl pop if i just use the using redis then i can just for example i have a queue call l1 then i can just do r push l1 element 0 then it becomes like l1 becomes 0 have the element 0 now if i can put l1 then it's now becoming in something r push it's getting appended there so now i have 0 1 element in this now i have 0 1 2 if i do l pop then of the l1 then what happens 0 is removed now so i have only i have element l1 is 1 2 similarly if i further i pop it then i have to then one is removed from the list then it's now i have only i if i finally i pop then not list become empty nothing i have nothing so if i further pop it i will get nothing since nothing is there we can of course if nothing is there since now i can use the bl pop so that i my process will my tcp my request will wait for some seconds maybe 200 milliseconds and then further that i will once that at request time sort then i will then i either, either i will get the element or nothing will happen the one advantage of bl pop is not it will not block the entire redis is a single thread single threaded server that means like you might think like bl pop will block all the connections all the requests but not 
So all the blocking calls in Redis are not blocked for other connection. It is blocked only for this connection. So all other connection can work in parallel and Redis will accept other connections as well. So if I have to implement something like producer and consumer using the, like, so what happens in, in the queue, then it's like, producer will just keep putting the element on the queue and consumer will take the elements from the queue and it will start to consume different elements, different items from the queue. And, and producer can work at their own, own, own pace and like producer might be producing at high, high rate, consumer cannot copy, the, copy that speed. So that way you can have more flexibility to like add more and more consumers in the system. Similarly, you can, you can like increase the number of producers also. Everything works very like independent here in this, in, in this, in this setup. Nothing is depending so only consumer, even though the API calls is still consumer can work on their own, own page. If you need more and more, then you can just increase the consumer, number of consumer and they will start consuming the elements from the queue. Again, like yeah, something like you have multiple producers and then you have multiple consumers uh, in this setup, they're, they're all like, they could be either consuming the same queue or they could be consuming more than one queue as well. You can set up your systems to like consuming the elements from more than one queue as well. So this is a like simple, like I'm saying like, just like a uh, simple, it's like a uh, first in first out, but there's something called priority key you, for example, uh, for uh, for example, let's say you want to schedule the invoice generation. So it should be generated the invoice, post the order confirmations or payment confirmation, check whether the payment has been confirmed by the gateway or not. Or send some notification at 2 a.m., 2 p.m. today, or maybe in 30 minutes or 20 minutes, or some other task that you want to schedule using the using as well using queue as well. This means now we need something called priority queue here so that you know, each task has their own priority based on the priority, the task whose priority is high should be like taken out first and they should be, they should be, ex that should be decued first and then based on that you take some action. So it's like producing some element at time t but you should consume at time some t plus delta. It's like a delayed task. You want to delay this for maybe 30 seconds or 30 milliseconds based on the use case you delay for some amount of time. If you look at simple queue, it cannot be directly is list as a simple since it has it just it doesn't provide any sort of like timing mechanism. But Redis has something called G set that we can use uh, G set to like uh, simulate our timing of these data structures or simulating of the delayed queue. It has something called odd, it's a like order by S code operation. So what happened, whatever the elements you put in the G set, it will have, it has some S code. So what we can do is like, if you want to put something in the G set, then we can just use the S code of the our time, like T plus Delta is a score. So for example, if I'm putting element at this time and I want to execute something at in 30 minutes, then I will just like put the S code as T plus time dot now plus 30 seconds. That way I will just put the element gc dot g add. I will use the g add command to I, I don't do that. Yeah. We can use the g add and g dem command to like add the elements in the in the g set g set. So so if it will look like g add Then you use gdm command to remove some elements from the list. So using the gdm, gdm you can you can also like do the g search. You can do gdm as well to find out if there are element element uh, if there are any any elements with the given key value pairs in the g set or not as well. That we can do as well. Find it out if the element that we have added is available in the g set or not. So from G set, we can build any like, uh, we can further uh, in, like uh, get the elements from the G set so that you can see if the priority is, uh, has reached or not. So every time you need like, you need like, you need like use the GDM command 
it's not like it, it cannot get the first and it can of course you can get the gdm by score or gdm by score that will give you the elements that is on the top as well so they just, uh, you can get the element using the score as well using these uh, uh radish commands we can see if uh, we can use like uh, to implement the uh, any delete queue as well so for so in this what happens your producer will produce an element on the g sheet we just add an add an element with the time of some delta t plus delta is a score then burker will just take one element and you can so what could also happen is like uh, it could it could so happen like uh, for example uh, if you're producing if you're like removing the element from the g set then your burker might your burker might crash in between in that case you will just lose the element that you have just removed from the g set so if you if you really want to like maintain the order of those elements so what you do instead of directly consuming those elements you put another list that will become a, that will become again like fifo and consumer will work on there nothing to change on the consumer side and consumer will just do the bl pop or l pop from the list and will start working in that same fashion so what you like you what you doing in the entire process you just produce one element you just add one element in the g sheet with the score then run some burker that will take out all the element with the score and based based on the score and it will if the score is a time so it can just check the score as like the time has elapsed of the given task or not or given message they will just pull that message and push it into the into the list and consumer will just take out using the l pop or bl pop and will start whatever the action whatever the action it has to take it will take that action Uh, things get really uh, pretty complicated when you have in message like what happens if there are some message it's like it's continuously failing falling for some reason since you have deployed some change, new changes or something has changed in between so continuously your, your bucket is crashing for some reason or uh, some api call is continuously continuously failing in that case you might think of like okay, i can there are like different ways to handle this like uh, for example you just like uh, try for n number of times before giving it giving this task of let's say this task cannot be executed or give some other worker to, or consumers to try it out or worker so that another can try it out and see if that worker is working perfectly for this new message or not for example if some new code is deployed then it could so happen that one worker is crashing but another worker might have the new code that can take it this task and like again start executing that that message building this mechanism becomes really complex since your worker once you pop the element from the list it will crash in bit it might crash in between so your worker is is crashing so you never you never got a chance to reenqueue the message so you have to build some process in between so that your message is also available in some secondary storage that can be claimed later for the usage uh it could be any other reason server is crashing for many reason it could be database connection so like shutdown was triggered any other reason it's crashing for some reason so what happens in such cases your message is if you haven't consumed the message successfully so you need some mechanism to like protect such message so that you can retry those messages once again if you want to really i mean and each of those messages then what you like you should be doing is like is you can like maintain a like simple another list which will have once you pop it you just append in the another list again as you popping it it might so as soon as you pop it what could happen is like uh, your server might uh, crash so again you did not get a chance to enqueue the new messages in the list as well so you need some sort of atomic operations here while you are popping the element from the list and so that you always have the element in the so you, you got the element as well and that element is also available in for like for the acknowledgement sort of like you need some sort of acknowledgement really or so successful or not only that only after that you can really confirm what happened to that message so like then this means another problem like for example if you put in the message in the another list then when you when, when you should be like removing this message from the list and what happens when to repost re this message let us say a message you you put in this new another list at time t and 
at what time like for example maybe you want to retire in 5 minutes or 10 minutes then this time has to be fixed otherwise what will happen like you will pile up all those messages and you have no control when to consume these messages let's see like that's a point where we come like uh, something like message visibility message visibility time out that gives you like at for how many seconds this message will not be visible for another consumers to consume the same message so the moment is simply like if you are able to successfully consume the message and then just you shut up like then just say okay remove this message since already you have consumed it it's fine every on every successful consumptions we just say okay remove this message from the list and like you want to reprocess this message okay then set the visibility timeout so that once the visibility timeout expired then that message would be available for other consumers to consume so your system will look like now this so you have g said then you have one list so consumer will take the element from the list uh, also it will put in the g set for like for the since you need the message message visibility timeout timeout also you need ordered here since some message could be coming first and going at later point of time as well so again you need the ordering of time here also since message of message can different you can have different uh, visibility timeout as well and some message if you want to set up the visibility time per message then it has to be ordered ordered once again ordering has to be done post that you have all the messages then again you have a problem of atomicity since you are doing you're adding since you first you consume the message from the list then again you're adding the list g set again if you crash it in between then again your message is lost so atomic operation is missing it once again so it all become boils down to this entire process to like this one so you have you have list then you have you have one you have delayed g set and then you have processing g set so what happens then if you whenever if you want to enqueue your message based on the if you directly want to enqueue the delayed message then you just put in the delayed g set and if you want to uh, if whenever you dequeue a message then you dequeue message from list and also you put the same message in the processing g set and there's a like behind you run some retry flows which will pick out if retry flows that will pick out the element based on the time elapses it can put that element back to the your list at the it could be your front it could be back depending on your choice maybe if you want to process the retry uh, i mean older message first then you put in the front instead of at the back but also sometimes what happens let us say you want to you know instead of uh, so in that case it's going to pause processing to delete it but what happens sometimes what do you, what do you want to do if even even though if a message has failed what you want to delete the execution for example let us say a message has failed three times if a message has failed three times then don't put this message directly to the list so what do you do delay the execution of this message by let us say using the exponential back off or linear back off using one of the mechanism you want to further delay the you no know, processing of this message even though message visible time out has expired in that case in this case what do you do you put this message back to the delayed j set based on the how much time you need for the you want to delay this message even though their time has expired visibility so you know your inter process will be like you either you enqueue the message in delayed g set or enqueue in the list once it is enqueued then for the uh, from the delayed g set it will always go to the list since it's just like a appending at the end but from the process processing set it can either go to the list or the or it can go back to the delayed j set or delayed it will only go when like if you want to trigger a uh, like back of mechanism otherwise it always you can just append or uh, prepend in the list prepend in the list yeah that way you have to have the control of the messages where it is going that like you can implement everything uh using the simple like g sheet and like list operations you can implement entire a key mechanism in redis so there are like many libraries available to like you to implement this entire features like uh 
if you want to just use in the java then jsk is there ruby sidekick rescue go go craft and bug there are others as well python as many as well php also and also in spring framework i have developed one library that is rq that is called rescue and that can be that you can use is use as well if you are using the spring frame spring framework and that's what i want to i can showcase some code as well so for example what happens like your entire application becomes something like this so you have a entire one application you connect with the multiple redis clusters you have it's like it's redis cluster setup so you have multiple redis here for redis node 1 2 3 and then you have schedulers scheduler will that will just work like picking the elements from the delayed g set and then it will just pull back to the it will and it will append to the To the list and producer is just just like if you put keep producing the new element of the on the redis redis list or g set and consumer will just consume the element from the from the redis and do the operation based on the whatever what based on the queue details or items it has similarly you can like produce but you can deploy multiple application each each one each one of them will have the same component since you want to run some schedulers that will pick that will move the elements from like g set to queue and similarly from the processing queue to the original queue as well and that way like what happened that is the uh, basic design and uh, you have everything there so for example for example this is the like uh, major schedulers which works for the delayed major schedulers it works on many of the queue so it schedules a task which goes and like uh, move the elements from so yeah so this is a massive move a task which moves the messages from you no know, g set to the queue name it will move from one one g set to the another queue so like as you also the your operation should be atomic when you are doing the messages movement from one queue to the one queue to the another queue or one gc to the another another list as well to make uh, atomic operations what we can do is like uh, run the lua script instead of directly no or instead of running that you can also run the transaction as well like redis transactions not pipeline since you need details as well you cannot run in pipeline since you will not have the response of the data but you can use transactions in the transaction you will get the Response from Redis, so just uh, do of the G add or something like that in the same operation. But you can actually use the Lua X script to you know, move the messages from here to one list to another G set or G set to list as well. So, for example, I am here. What happens if Q is active? Then what I do? I just like I just uh, execute a Lua script, which takes which moves the element from one Q to the another, which moves the element from G set to the Q. So this is the Redis script. Um, I believe this is a push message. So you can just use like G range by score based on the score you are taking out all the elements. So this is the G set name, and this is the number of elements you want. And you put like number of so number of elements is here. Limit is zero comma this, and this is the score that you want to use. then if you want any elements those are expired you can just like take out all the element and you just like do r push so you put you put all the element at the or uh, at the end of the queue you can also be at the end of the queue and like you remove all the elements from the redis as well it is g set and now this is for under part of the code which takes like what happens it gives you the if there are any more elements in the redis of the, those are expired then even it's not expired it just give the it takes it takes to the first element it gives the score so that you can wait for some more time since it's a uh, you can wait for some more times uh, instead of directly calling the next iteration maybe if you want to delay the message movement maybe for 5 seconds or 10 seconds or even more that you can control based on the score and based on the score of the current element as well 
and there are for example if you want to put, i mean pop the message then you, are, you just look at the first element of the list and if it's not null then what did you do you take out the first you add the element in the g sheet using the g add command and this is the then you have this is the element and this is the score that you want to put as a score and this is the uh, g set name so g add g set name then you have uh, a score then this is the element that you put it here and if you, and at the end what do you do you just help out the element and get the last element and for that, if you want to use some sort of no, sometimes what happens is your so in between, if you want to add some notification there, you can have the notification that will help you to uh, handle the cases where your scheduler was lazy and like they did not schedule the task, and there are many elements pending in the pending in the delayed queue, and those must be executed first. Those must be moved. In that case, you can just check the head of the. You can just check the head of the. Uh, your G set and see if there are any element. Then publish the, your publish the score of that element so that you know okay there are any pending element that must be moved from, G set to the list, that you can handle using this type of, handler as well. So so what happens here? I get a message on the, message from the Redis, uh, on the channel. From the channel, I consume the messages, and based on that, I just since it sends, it gives me the, it sends me the score of here V two, so I get the score as well. So I just parse the score, parsing long. I just parse the score, so I know which, how, what is the delay currently it has. So based on the data, if I see I don't have any queue, based on that I just ignore it. If there are any queue, then I say okay, schedule this task immediately to like uh, that will execute and. That will move the message from one queue to uh, that will move the message from G set to the G set to the list. Then we can go back to and it will schedule another task which will run in some time. Excuse me, it creates a message mover task that will move the element from G set to the queue name, G set to a given queue, and that will be executed in, in like that you can execute it immediately or schedule it for some time based on the delay you have. So that way you can design a system that will uh, work on like different use case as well. And then, so one the advantage if you you have is like if you want to use Kafka compared to like Redis, then you can save some resources like maintenance costs. You can use use the same infrastructure you have, and layer of maintenance costs that you have. And of course, you can implement the delayed queue that can have more delay, or maybe one hour, thirty minutes, and even more. And then also you can implement of that. One feature you don't have in like KDC like partitioning of queue since all the elements that you have will be uh, all the elements will be living in the only one list or one set belongs to one queue. It's not not like the Kafka where you can do the sorting sorting or partitioning. Where you have different partition of a different given topic. And also, if you're implementing using the radius, then you can like consume on, you can consume one message only once. Not like Kafka, you have like offset and then multiple consumer groups. That can be used to you know, consume the that every consumer can try to consume the message from different or uh, in a consumer group. There are no such thing that you can build it based on like maintaining the different uh, information in your data in your system, uh, but not it not be really made trivial like the Kafka. You just like say this is, this is the consumer group I have. And this is the consumer members, and then you have partitioning. Partitioning will be like a little bit tricky here, since like you don't have any direct mechanism of uh, partitioning a data list in Redis. Only each list will be like deciding on one system 
or one cluster node or, or another cluster node. Of course, it could be like primary, secondary. That could be like they have only the replica of the list you have in on the primary node. If you have any question, then you can ask me. Yeah, Sonu. So you mentioned Redis is a single-threaded server, but all the blocking calls are not blocked for other connections. I mean, can you elaborate more on it? Yes. So, so what happened in Redis? Uh, so Redis internally maintains. So even though uh, Redis is single-threaded, so what happened? When you give give a blocking command, okay. So you are blocking on operations. For example, you are doing BL pop. So you are you are saying, okay, I want to pop this element from this list. So block for some maybe two hundred millisecond. While the uh, so that command is like queue, that command put in the background that particular task, and, uh, and what happens? Uh, on another request can then then Redis servers can uh, still can uh, take the another task in that particular on the uh, on the same connections or uh, they can execute in, in the same thread. So what happens? So you have you have a background threads and you have a main thread. Main thread will keep accepting the connection as soon as there is some event. Then again, it will uh, execute the pending task. Go back to the. It will go back to the pending task. Right. So this uh, this way the asynchronous is maintained, is it? Yes, it is maintained. Oh. Even if you uh, so if you're using the blocking com blocking command anywhere in Redis, then asynchronous is maintained everywhere. Got it. Thanks. Uh, so, is there any limit in terms of how many blocking commands are can be concurrently kept on block? Or, uh, um, I don't have any number, but I think you can put as many commands. As, there should not be any limitation on this until your resources of the server is exhausted. Since it's all about the you are putting more and more resources, but the Number of file disk drop cost. Now you can't open more than file disk number of requests. Since each request will lead to a one file disk or pending file disk, it it can be closed. So what does that that mean? Like let's say you establish one connection, you send request on TCP. That connection is still alive, and you want to you want to reach another request. So what will happen is on the server you might run out of the TCP port port as well, and you can also run run out of the number of open file disk or so that way it might happen like you might run, run out of the resources maybe around 65000 unless you increase the number of tcp you can increase the tcp port but of course you can increase the number of file descriptor on a, any server so there is of course a limitation maybe you can say around 65000 you can have maximum on the, on those many open connections Sonu, so one more thing that you mentioned is message can only be consumed once, but yes. this is not how message queues work. So can you elaborate? Okay. So you're talking, yeah, I think you're talking about this part, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So message queue means, uh, message queue means, uh, I mean, why would you consume the same message twice? What is the use case to continue the same message twice? No, uh, I'm considering the case of, you know, message delivery has failed, something like that. No, because see, in message queues, basically you have messages being delivered multiple times. So this part is something that was confusing to me. Sure. So what happened in this case is like, uh, what I mean to say here is like what happens in Kafka. In Kafka, what happens? You can you, you can consume the same message by multiple consumers, consumer group. Right. Okay. But in Redis, you cannot do it. Let us say let us say you, you have a Q Q one, and you want to use different message group. Let us say you want to run consumer group C one and group G one and group G two. In in Kafka, what happens? Let us say there's a message M one. M one can be consumed by both both groups G one and G two. But in Redis, you cannot implement that feature. Okay, right. Understood. So if I put something, got it right? Yep. Clear. Okay. Okay, so no one thing. So I think if you uh, uh, couple this side, so I think you mentioned like one message cannot be, uh, message cannot be, con can be consumed only once. So you're saying that if we have to implement something similar in Redis, then we have, we need like, uh, uh, multiple uh, queues. We need multiple queues for each consumer group. It will be yes. uh, that would be the equivalent, right? Yes. Yes. That means like uh, that means like you need some sort of some sort of replication. So it's like what you are saying now. You need 
some sort of a duplication as well and duplication has to be done in advance you cannot add group on demand the reason is if you add you no know, uh, a group on demand then you don't have elements there since queue or topic you would be empty so e duplication has to be done before not like kafka you already have elements you start continuing from the start of the topic in kafka you have so one more yeah yeah that's fine uh, and so so other question that i have is uh, see your rq that you have okay so uh, so the your implementation so it works as a separate server or it has to be like for example let's say i have a, a spring application and in spring application i have five nodes so in that all the five nodes have to uh, use rq right or or if or can it run as a separate server ha huh, i am working on that which you that you can use as a like completely uh, i mean uh, rest api based broker which you can just put as a you, you can deploy that as a on one server and use the rest api to pull the message and push the message uh but in the current implementation what happens you just integrate that api in your code you just pull the api in jar file and you just set up the jar file and it should be it will work on the all the systems Are there any more questions? Okay. So I think if we don't have any questions, I think uh, uh, thanks, Sonu, uh, for the talk. I think uh, this is where we'll end the distributed systems meetup.